So what you want to do is mimic a call that, that's going to be um, having syllables that are about oh, five to seven seconds apart. What you want your lips to do is form the word that sounds like it's going to come out as boop. And that will help the sound come out right. And the other, the other thing I want you to do in practice here in just a second, um, try to have the air that's passing through your um, vocal cords um, come up and rather than directing it right through your mouth, try to direct it right towards the roof of your mouth, which will do two things. It'll help it sound deeper and will also help to make it sound a little bit fuller of a sound. So once you start forming that sound with your lips as well and go ahead and start making the sound. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead and join in. <clears throat> okay, so that's the quick practice. That's the quick lesson. And so, guys, from here on out, definitely want you to be practicing during the day, you know, all the waking hours. Brian Linkhart, ecology and ornithology professor at Colorado College, has been studying flammulated owls for 27 years. Every summer, Brian and his team of research assistants, usually consisting of former students of his, moved to the Manitou Experimental Forest outside Woodland Park to conduct their research. The Manitou Experimental Forest, formerly a school of forestry owned by Colorado College, is currently home to several ecological studies, of which Brian's is the longest running. You kind of look like a waiter with that shirt on. You kind of look like a culinary advisor with this shirt on, right? kind of look like you should ask me what I'd like to drink and then go get it when I tell you. So Connor and, Kirsten, Connor and Eric, how about a couple of females? Sounds good to me. Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, put that on tape and send it to Lexi. All right. Uh, Lexi. Uh, and all those goodies you made. <laughs> Continue to make them, but not for whom you think you are. <laughs> My name's Scott Yanko. I've been working for Brian for four years. I'm Eric Monk, and uh, this is my second year on the study. I'm Connor Blanchet. I've been working for Brian for just one season now. Kirsten Becker, and this is my first year on the flam crew. The flammulated owl is one of the smallest species of owls known. Its Latin name, Otis flammeolus, means little flame, referring to a line of orange feathers down its back. They are secondary cavity nesters, using abandoned woodpecker holes to raise their young. So right when these birds become active, right at dusk, or I should say about 20 minutes after dusk, during the nestling period, that's when the male is delivering prey. But the male will only capture one prey item at a time, one moth, and only bring back to the nest one moth at a time. That's typical raptor limitation. Despite being so small, these owls have a life history that resembles those of larger raptors. They are relatively long-lived and produce only a few eggs per clutch. When these neotropical migrants return from their winter habitat in Central America to breed, they attract the interest not only of scientists, but of photographers as well. Flammulated owls are classified as sensitive by the U.S. Forest Service, which expresses concern for the viability of its population. The information provided by Brian's study is extremely valuable for conservation and management of the species. I mean, he's taken a species that was basically unknown 27 years ago, or very little was known about it, and a lot of what was known was in fact wrong. Um, and he's taken a species like that to a level where we know so much about it now that we're able to draw inferences from the species to larger <laughs> issue. <laughs> what Scott was going to say was that because of Brian's study, 
The information we now have about the owls can be used to indicate the health and viability of the ecosystem they inhabit, providing insight into larger issues like fire suppression and global warming.